Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today, well, today I want to talk a little more about head tracking and uh, face tracking, eye tracking in uh, Elite Dangerous and other games, but specifically Elite Dangerous because that's what's on the screen right now. Now, uh, you might be noticing that as I'm turning towards the camera, the screen is moving. Of course, that's because I have this little uh, headset thing. It has three little retro reflectors that are reflecting back to my track IR. Now, of course, this is great. It gives you hands-free viewing of the screen. It does mean you have to wear a kind of not necessarily the most fashionable cap. And you know what? I like my efficient hairstyle. Now, I also have this rather fetching head-mounted display, which is really good, really immersive. However, it does make my eyes very hot. So when somebody said, hey, you know what? I have a technology that will let you just track the screen with your eyes alone, I thought, hey, that might be something I'm interested in. So yeah, I got sent this, and I'm gonna tell you, they sent me it for free saying, could you make a video about it? And I was saying, well, sure, assuming that it's not crap. So this is what it looks like. It has a little uh, sticker here that says Void, which is of course very appropriate considering that Elite Dangerous is set in the void of space. Inside it, you get a little uh, little sensor, very thin sensor bar here. It obviously has cameras and infrared and you know all sorts of stuff that will basically find out all about where my eyes are looking. Now I'm gonna set this thing up and we'll see how it actually works. Okay and here it is running so to speak. It's not really running at this time because I have enabled it through the pinky trigger on my Cytec X52. So if I pull that, and now it is actually tracking my head. Now, the way it's tracking my head is pretty much how you'd expect with Track IR, right? Track IR, you end up holding your head very still because the motion uh, translates. The difference here, I guess, is that because it's really, it's really tracking your eyes, and if you move it off center, it doesn't automatically return to the center. So the rate of motion is much lower than with the Track IR. Uh, and again, I guess this is something you're going to have to get used to if you like this. Obviously, some people like the idea of not having to wear a silly hat like this and instead being able to just look where they, they want. That's great. Now, if we come around, we can actually see how this thing is working here, right? The bar at the bottom of the screen is the thing that is doing most of the work. And I'm just going to reset this to the middle while I'm pointing this out. So if we bring the camera around, we can actually see there's... LEDs here that are basically broadcasting, you know, light. These are pulsing. There's cameras in there that are trying to track everything to construct what's in the scene. I get, I'm not sure exactly how the technology works. This is the Toby Eye Tracker 4C. And what it's doing is it's, tr it's bouncing the light and it's probably going through your pupils into your retina and bouncing back. And therefore it's able to figure out exactly where your eye is pointing. Now, it looks really bright on this camera here that Sky is holding. This camera is a cheap Panasonic camcorder. And cheap camcorders, well, the standard sensors that are used to filter out, to, to image in visible light, they have to have things called Bayer masks in front of them to make the pixels have different colors. They also have a filter to filter out infrared light. This is the near infrared. It's not like thermal radiation. It's just, you know, it, it's out of the range of the eyes usually. So cheap cameras, they don't filter it as well. And this looks really bright. But if I bring up my iPhone, uh, you can see like there is a, there's an LED and probably side by side, you can see that the LED there is way brighter when it's viewed directly through this camera. For comparison, if you actually look up at the lighthouses in the corner of the room, right? These are for my HTC Vive. Those uh, are pretty bright. You know, you, you don't usually see that, but there you go. The spectrum is slightly different, apparently. Anyway, you know, this works pretty well. If You, you can also focus on how my eyes work. Because, hey, who doesn't want to see old man's eyes looking around crazily? So turn it on. There, just, uh, I'm going to try just moving this with just my eyes. And this takes a bit of practice, right? There, you know, it, it feels a little strange at first. And it definitely needs, there's a bit of a learning curve here. 
So you're going to come in and it's not going to be perfect. Oh, look, there's a target. Let's see you if I can find it. You have the brows of science. I have the brows of science. Oh, look, it's a Type 7. What a shame that I have no weapons because I could totally engage this thing. Yeah! Look at that. 600 meters per second in my Imperial Eagle. It's pretty cool. It's, it's hard. One of the things that's hard, actually, is that you want to track these displays at the side. And there's a bit well what will happen is as you look around you will track different parts of the display and things can get very confusing it's especially confusing when you come into dock and the main display when docked will track around and you don't really want it to track around but i don't see any way to stop that happening similarly here i can see that oh the appeal for toxanji viricide and i ended up in the top 50 percent and made 5 million credits. That's very nice. I think that calls for some celebration boosting. Oh yeah. I love that boost. So this is the Eye Tracker 4C. You might have seen some other reviews of the Toby Eye Tracker. There is an older model which requires uh, USB 3. The Eye Tracker 4C has moved much more of the logic into the hardware. And so therefore it's doing the processing on the device and so you can get away with using only a regular USB 2 connection, which obviously makes it a lot more available for people. The device actually has a magnet on the back, so what they give you in the box is a pair of uh, metallic strips with adhesive, so you can stick that on the bottom of the monitor, and when you're not using it, you can just pull it off and put it in its box, and everything will be uh, neatly packaged away, and you don't need to imagine that it is looking into your eyes all the time. I think I pulled this thing to stop it working. So yeah, the, the eye tracker, it's definitely an interesting option for those of you who don't want VR or who have VR and have lots of money, who perhaps like the idea of track IR and don't like the fact that it is very overpriced. I love my track IR. I, I think I may still continue to use it largely because I'm more comfortable with it. This one, the tracking isn't as fast as I would like, but it's still pretty nice. Uh, you know, it may t just take a bit of getting used to for this. So, yeah, great little device there, not for everyone, but definitely if you play Elite or if you play other flight sims, there is a, a real argument for it. Apparently it's also compatible to, with a bunch of Ubisoft games like uh, Assassin's Creed games and things like that. I have not had a chance to play it because, hey, uh, I don't play those games because I'm not you know, big into that. Uh, take a look at their website and you will see what games it supports. I'm also going to point out that it supports Elite through something called their iFinity system, which is not really proper support. It's kind of, um, it's kind of supporting it through different APIs, so it's not as well integrated as the Track IR or the Head Mounted Display support. There we go. There is Pluto up there. I'm obviously flying over Charo and the Moon, or the binary planet, depending upon your perspective. Anyway, yeah, I'm glad to have looked at this. I hope, uh, hope some of you guys find it interesting. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>